Hey guys, it's Warners. I have another build for you today. Three, two, one. Kind of evened out. Oh! Wow! Incredible! <laughs> oh, boo! <laughs> so today I'm going to be doing a Minsk build. Minsk in boo, to be exact. You, this is boo. And boo, meet you. Minsk is one of the most iconic characters in the Baldur's Gate 3 series, and I feel like they didn't really know what to do with him in Baldur's Gate 3, so they kind of just had him at the end, which I feel like was very disappointing for some of the older fans. And for me, I really wanted him in my party a lot earlier than the very end of Act 3. With Matthew Mercer's amazing voice acting, Minsk finds that the less thinking he does, the easier the trusting comes. And just the great character that Minsk is, I really wanted to make a build that could be enjoyable and also have the fans of the first two games be able to play something very reminiscent of the first two games. One thing that's very interesting about Minsk in Baldur's Gate 3 is you don't really get access to him until you're typically level 12 and then he's just set as a ranger level 1. But if you played the previous games, which I have not, yes he is a ranger, but ranger is very different in those games than it is in Baldur's Gate three because first of all it's based off of a different version of D&D &D. and so a lot of people don't really know what to do with Minsk when they receive him in act three. Based on the research I've done and what I've seen in forums like on reddit and things I've looked up online Minsk had a unique berserk ability that is very reminiscent of rage or the berserker frenzy but it wasn't exactly that and then it's very iconic for Minsk to throw boo at his enemies but with boo's measly 20 health and him not really love leveling up much, it's not very practical vanilla in Baldur's Gate 3. So this build is trying its best to make a viable barbarian ranger with throwing boo at his enemies being viable and fun, and it's also just hilarious. All right, so level one, starting Barbarian. So one thing to keep in mind about this build is by the time you have Minsk, you're probably already going to be level 12. So I am going to keep that in consideration when I'm doing this build. That being said, there's an end game item that ups your con a lot. When I had Minsk, I already had this item. So I'm just going to dump his con and assume you use that item. If you are doing this build for a different character, then yeah, definitely go more con. Maybe dump the wisdom because you don't really need wisdom. You're not really casting ranger spells that often. So yeah, anyway, mostly strength and dex to get that AC up. Level three, we go Berserker, very famous Minsk ability. And you get Frenzy, which gives you Enraged Throw, as well as Frenzied Strike. Basically, every turn, you're gonna be able to make a bonus action attack. Level four, we get our first feat, and I'm gonna go Tavern Brawler, get that strength up. Level five, we'll get extra attack. This is when I'm gonna switch to Ranger. Honestly, any of these are fine. Ranger Knight isn't gonna be that useful to you because in my version, you're not gonna be wearing heavy armor. So I probably go Bounty Hunter and then for Natural Explorer I just go fire damage because it's the most common damage type out of these three fighting style I'm just gonna go defense and spells. I'm gonna go for Goodberry and long strider If you have someone else with long strider go for different spells, but yeah and then we get another spell. I'm going for non-concentration spells that I can use out of combat. So I'm going to go speak with animals. And then the best hunter ability, hunter ranger ability, Colossus Slayer. I'm going to go one more level ranger just so I can get that beat. And I'm going to go two in strength. Then we're going to go back to barbarian. Level six, we're going to get mindless rage. This is nice because it's, it's very thematic to what Minsk's berserk used to be. And then level seven barbarian, we get feral instinct. You get plus three to your initiative and you cannot be surprised. Level eight barbarian in our level 12, last level. I'm gonna go great weapon master. Let's summon Boo real quick. Oh, there he is. He's so cute. So first of all, this is not an item that you're going to be wearing all the time, but you can equip this shield, Viconia's Walking Fortress, and then you can cast Warding Bond on Boo. This is really good to keep Boo alive for longer. So yeah, I would definitely highly recommend using that. And then what's great about this item is you can unequip it and you still have Warding Bond on. So very good. All right, so we're doing the Vest of Soul Rejuvenation. This gives you a 
plus two to attack rolls and damage of throwing attacks. And we're going to be throwing Boo around. So yeah, it's also clothing, not armor. So we still get the benefits of our unarmored defense that we get with Barbarian. And we get plus two armor class on top of that. Very, very nice. And then Cloak of Displacement. This just makes it so we're harder to hit. At the beginning of the wearer's turn, the Cloak activates, granting enemies disadvantage on attack rolls that target the wearer. And yeah, it, it, it works until you take damage. Helmet, we got the Horns of the Berserker. You gain a plus two to attack rolls when attacking creatures that have already taken damage. And then unarmed and melee attacks will deal an extra two necrotic damage as long as you don't have full health. And then you'll take damage every turn if you don't deal damage. So that's pretty good. It also helps because with Berserker Rage, you actually get a penalty on your to hit. So adding this plus two really helps with that. Then this item is very strange and a lot of people who have seen it haven't used it because it, it was confusing. So this is the Abyss Beckoners. The wearer summon creatures have resistance to all damage except psychic. So this gives Boo Wild Heart Bear Barbarian uh, Rage essentially. But at the start of each turn, Boo must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or be driven mad. And when I first put this on, I was confused because out of combat, it was happening like every second. But if you look in your passives and it's actually just right here, but it's also, yeah, it's actually just right here. We have Demon Spirit Aura and you can turn it off and you can turn it on. So basically what you do is when combat starts, you turn it on and then he has resistance to damage, but you don't want to keep it on outside of combat. Really good item for all summoned builds, but very good for this build as well to keep Boo alive longer. Then we have the Evasive Shoes. This is just to get my armor class up. Again, this build, you take a lot of damage, so it's good to have the highest AC possible. Then for my weapon, I went with the Impaler. This is mostly because I like to have variety in my builds. Of course, you could always use, you know, Boldarian Giant Slayer if you want. It's a good weapon. There's so many good weapons you can use, but I just feel like this weapon's really interesting. And okay, so Colossus Slayer does extra damage when the target doesn't have full health. This does the opposite. It does extra damage when the target has full health. So what's nice about that is no matter what situation your target is in, they will be taking extra damage every hit. So you deal an extra 1d10 piercing damage to targets that still have all their hit points. And then to help with the tankiness, you get Death Drinker. When you reduce the target to zero hit points, you gain two to 20 temporary hit points, which that's a really big range. And uh, it ends up being, you know, on average 10 temporary hit points every time you kill someone, which is awesome. And then it also has this unique ability, Blood Render. So it's just like, you know, a normal weapon ability. But first of all, it deals four extra damage at level 12 because it adds your proficiency bonus. And then also you get Blood Render. It doesn't describe it very well here, but if you look at here, Affected Entity deals an additional 1d4 piercing damage on all hits while taking 1d4 piercing damage per turn. It's just a little bit of extra damage. It's not like amazing, but it's just kind of nice. And this is a plus two weapon, so it's definitely helping you be able to hit pretty easily. Then this bow, I just thought was really cool and interesting, and it works well with this build where I have a pretty high dex and a pretty high strength. Basically, this weapon deals additional damage equal to your strength modifier. So you add your dex and your strength onto this. Then, of course, we have the Amulet of Greater Health. This one I'm all buffed up with Heroes Feast and Aid. I have almost 200 HP. It's insane. This also helps with the fact that I'm going to be taking booze damage as well. Just, just having as much HP as possible really helps with this build. Then I have the Ring of Restoration, classic item. But the reason I have this is for a different reason than I have used it in other builds. It's for this ring. When you heal a creature, you gain a 1d4 bonus to attack rolls and saving those for two turns. One thing that I found super interesting about this ring is it says it only gives you bless when you heal a creature. But what I've found, it gives the allies that you heal bless. So for example, one thing you'll notice in this build is when Boo gets low HP, I throw a healing potion at Boo and then Boo gets blessed. So that's pretty nice. And yeah, that, that's it for the gear. And um, let's go ahead and go to the build next. All right, so I cast uh, Hero's Feast, Aid. So we're raging, we're frenzy raging. Oh, Matt Mercer, what a good rage. On a successful hit, you gain Blood Render, which lets you deal more damage at the cost of some hit points. I have almost 200 hit points, so it doesn't matter to me. And then I have this for three turns. Okay, so I got the Bless. Okay, let, let's bite him. This wizard is really bothering me. Okay, there we go. Yes, let's do this.
Oh, that was amazing. Okay, opportunity attack. Oh, 32. That was 40 damage. Opportunity attack. Oh, ho, ho. Come on, boo, get her. She's blind. Why is she blinded? Throwing boo at her made her blinded? Why? I don't know what caused that, but I love it. Hey, there we go. FYI, if you put good berries on the ground, Boo can eat them. I am very mad that you attacked my hamster. <laughs> Let's see Boo eating a good berry. It is a bonus action for Boo to eat a good berry, by the way. He still has his regular action for attacking. Opportunity attack. Reach weapon benefits. Oh yeah. So this wizard is causing problems. Let's take care of that wizard. Get that archer, advantage. Get that archer. Yeah. Get him. <laughs> We're going into a slightly spoiler area. <laughs> oh ho ho, yeah. Yeah, okay, um, that was a one rounder, one rounder. It kinda evened out. Oh! Ooh. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We're getting so close to a thousand subs. Once we reach a thousand subs, I will be doing a shadow themed party video. And I'm super excited for that. If you enjoyed the content and you would like more of this, consider subscribing.